chance to read the minutes from the last meeting. Any questions, corrections? Move to approve. Second. All right, seconded. All those in favor? All right, carry. More public works, information only. Um, oh, is Andy not coming tonight? I don't know. I will, Brian, but it's not on my list yet. It doesn't make sense, but it's on me. It's on me. Um, so we'll go ahead and open up our first public hearing. Uh, zoning amendments. Casey, you want to? They were looking at amendments and I sent them all to you. And instead of, I did also put them in a dandy chart format. So instead of, would you like me to read them verbatim? Or would you like me to just go down the chart and kind of give you the. How about we go down the chart? Okay. Uh, the solar energy is basically the zone code has nothing in it right now. Uh, regulating any type of solar energy system. So we thought it would be wise to add something. The regulations that you read in here are a mere image of Marshall counties. Uh, we, Eric Strader is our president, is our chairman of our board, and obviously that is their business. That's his bailiwick, and I asked him which ordinances he saw in a state that seemed to work well. And he said that Marshall counties seemed to work very well, and they were written clearly and easy enough. Um, to not only regulate the industry, but also for people to understand. So what you really read in here, uh, if you read through them, is verbatim of Marshall County. Um, it really, it was. It was a very easy to read and understand ordinance, and it did the purpose. So the nuts and bolts of it is basically you're allowed the micros and the smalls in residential areas. So anybody in the city in a residential district could have the rooftop mounted um, or antenna mounted solar um, facilities and our systems, but then once you got out into the commercial and the ag, that's where the larger systems were allowed. Some are special exceptions, some are, um, I think the majority of them are special exceptions. So those are basically the solar energy systems. The manure storage structures, again, we really had nothing in there as far as setbacks on these, and this has more to do with the ag district, which there is none in the city. But just as an FYI, the board did um, actually define those and they require a permit, and then they also um, added a setback so that they would be set back off of the road and off the property lines. Um, so that, that's pretty much that. The privacy fences, that was a clarification. Um, at one point, the language, when it actually went to an area, was deleted out of the Ag District. We needed to fix it, it was a mistake. So we went ahead and we clarified the definition a little bit, and we added it into the Ag District to make sure that was clear. clear. Again, really doesn't apply to the city, um, but the definition does, and it was really just a clarification that the fence could go on the property line when that um, incorporated area, or in the, in the county, the unincorporated area, that legislative body chose to do that. I have two that chose to put it off the line, but unless it specifically says that, it can go on the property line. The landscaping codes, this one does affect the city. And uh, what we were finding in commercial districts, there's a requirement for any new building to have a perimeter <coughs> plantings all the way around the building, and to also have a number of trees planted uh, to keep some green space, whether it's commercial or industrial. The problem we have is that some of our commercial entities build 300 by 180 foot buildings, and two sides may border a fence row, out, you know, specifically thinking of one out in the county and maybe a right-of-way that already has trees on it. And perimeter plantings um, are very conducive to the business. You know, I have one business that built a very large building, again, 300 by almost 200 building, and in between the two buildings was concrete, and that was the whole purpose. They wanted to use it for storage, but you can't put a perimeter planting around that. So what the board wanted to do was actually allow for an alternative plan to be presented to the Planning Commission for landscaping. So. Say, for example, a pilot is a prime example. 
to have perimeter plantings all the way around it or the internal islands inside their parking area. It's not conducive to the type of business because of the turnaround space with the vehicles and the semis. So what they did was they took the same amount of plantings and they put them in other areas that did work well for them. And so those alternative plans can actually be presented to the Planning Commission to make it a little bit easier for that landscaping code to be followed and um, produce the same effect. So that's what you see here. And then they changed 12 inches to 18 inches to make it the same across the board. And then signs, again, this affects um, the city. This would be in the historic downtown, the downtown commercial, and the village commercial district. Currently, the code says that any sign has to be 10 feet off the right of way. But the problem is that all three of these districts have zero setbacks for the buildings. So basically, you have a building that could be built on the property line but the sign has to set back 10 feet. And it's very difficult for businesses, especially along 9th Street and then Main Street uh, 25 to the south, to follow that, um, to actually be 10 feet off. So what the board did was they took that out, made it a zero setback, but then put in language that said that the sign can set have a zero setback, but it cannot be a vision clearance issue for alleys, drives, or roadways. Um, and it cannot, and no portion of the sign can set within the uh, the right away you know project into that so it was a nice offset and that's basically it um, any questions questions from the questions from the public all right um we go to public so moved Second. Okay. Saying all in favor? All right. <clears throat> going to, do you need us to jump to your next, or are you good? Well, one thing kind of going with the amendments, what they also did was amend the fee ordinance, which uh, the county council did approve. But I did wanted to give them to the city uh, council just to show you what the differences were. And again, um, I pulled, just for your knowledge, I pulled. I believe it was 17 counties, but every county that was 5,000 uh, population around us. So whether they were 5,000 less or 5,000 more, I had about 17 counties. There were, I think, three or four of them that did not have fee structures. They don't charge fees to smaller counties uh, or no zoning. Some counties in Indiana still don't have zoning. And, and this is only for the zoning code. This doesn't have anything to do with your building code or your sidewalks. Um, and. Then I also pulled the surrounding counties that were larger than the 5,000, Cass, Miami, Marshalls, you know, all of those. So all total, I think we had around 15 that the board compared to. And um, they tried to pick the happy medium between all of it and kind of bring us up to the standards of the counties around us of the fees they charge. We're on a lower tier. We haven't changed it since 2008 when the area came in. So the biggest change would be the location improvement permits went up from 25 to 50. And I gave you both. Um, I gave you the new, which says proposed, but again, last week the county council approved it. Um, and then our existing one. Two things I wanted to let you know, specifically you can kind of compare those two. I wanted to let you know that back in 2008, one of the things that the city wanted was a different subdivision fee, and the board did not change that. So that, that was the choice of the city to keep their commercial primary plats at 1500 and um, but within the Rochester Incorporated District and limits, it's only 1000 So the board did not, and you'll see that, the board did not change anything that um, the city council specifically asked for in 2008 <coughs> with those fees. So um, the biggest change would be the VZA applications going from 60 to 175. <coughs> they actually added a mobile home park which wasn't really in there uh, just because the mobile home park is basically a huge subdivision uh, with lots of inner working parts that we all have to deal with so um, they changed that left the 500 on the zone map amendment and then put in solar array which again these fees near Miami County or Marshall counties so. I was going to ask that question is there a definition of micro versus small versus medium versus large? Yes, we added those definitions in. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Thank you. Thank you. Brian, there was another um, executive session that you guys had that you have to 
the same. We listed on the first go with the first one. Uh, common capital. That was included in my motion. That was both of them. Oh, I think it was. <laughs> Who seconded that? Anyway. Right. Was that in your second? Did you? I just second the motion. Okay. All right. <laughs> so go ahead and put Marty down and Marty yep. down. Yep. Okay, um, go ahead and open up our second public hearing, the additional appropriation uh, for the fire engine purchase. Do we have any questions, comments about? Chief, just right here. Chief, just right here. Chief, just right here. Chief, Any questions from the public on regarding what we're doing? Talking about the uh, additional appropriation for the new fire truck. Okay. Excuse my tardiness. Sorry. It's only happened once in <laughs> six years since I've been here. Can you tell that. us the amount? Um, 400000 That's what we're moving. What was the total amount of the truck, Tom? You remember? Yes, I have it here. $497,352. Then we'll play a progressive payment uh, at the contract signing of $397,882, leaving a balance of $99,470 uh, when the project's completed. <clears throat> Total savings was with the early payment. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I don't have that right in front of me. I, th I want to say it was like 504 originally, and then with the early payment, it knocked it down to the. the Four ninety-seven. Yeah. Okay. Anyone have any questions or comment? Yes. Here are the original bids when they came in, and this is the contract for the prepayment. Do you need those or? I can make copies and get them to you after a meeting. Yeah. Any motion across the public hearing? Second. All right. All those in favor? That was Mason and Brian. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we'll open up our third final public hearing, the MSRP mm -hmm. grant. <coughs> Good evening. Um, I'm Steve Graham with the North Central Indiana Regional Planning Council. I'm serving as the Grand Administrator for the uh, Rochester Downtown Partnership uh, Main Street Revitalization Grant. Uh, tonight's public hearing is a requirement of the Community Development Block Grant Program, CDBG program. Uh, CDBG is uh, administered by the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs. We, typically refer to them as an OCRA or OCRA. Um, the Main Street Grant requires a unit of local government to serve as the lead applicant. The city's been kind enough to do so uh, in partnership with the uh, Main Street organization. Um, one of the requirements is for the project area to be determined as designated as Smallman Blight. Um, have a resolution that will be in front of you all shortly for that. Um, the block grant program approximately has $2 million this year for the MSRP. Uh, 
grant. The maximum grant amount for that program is six hundred thousand dollars. It's the city's uh, requesting six hundred thousand um, dollars on Friday. There's a twenty percent local match commitment. Um, local match sources for this particular project is um, the city's contributed twenty thousand dollars for architectural fees. Uh, Fulton County Community Foundation is offered in uh, $25,000. Uh, the Redevelopment Commission is coming in with $15,000. Downtown Partnership is at $5,000. And then a total local investment of $96,720. Um, the amount of the grant going to benefit low to moderate income individuals is $200. $66,640. Um, that hits all my talking points for this evening. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Harry to talk a little bit about the project, unless you all have questions for me at this time. Harry will uh, give a brief explanation of, of where we're at in terms of projects. Here we go again. Final stages. Um, yeah, as I said, the application is due Friday, and uh, in the, what has happened since the last public hearing is basically the um, architect met, architect and I met with each one of the building owners and finalized the number that they were comfortable with for their project. We had several properties that did drop out. Um, we are now at 12 different addresses, 10 different properties, including the Times Cinema. That allowed more of the available match dollars to be raised, so the projects got more grant funding for the more expensive projects. Um, but the entire the entire project cost will be seven hundred and sixty one thousand seven hundred twenty dollars. And um, twenty one percent of that is local money, building owners and other funding sources that you mentioned. This, the building owners have um, deposited with the city of Rochester $96,000, $96,720, and that is already in escrow being held, and that's their, that's their match amount. Plus, they've all been signed uh, memorandums of understanding that they have to um, retain some um, contingency dollars. That was a document that uh, they've all signed and the city attorney approved. Um, they also have um, kind of gone through their projects pretty extensively, I think. Um, so I think they all have a pretty good understanding as to which, which way we're heading. That could all evolve as uh, the project, if the project gets awarded and further drawings are done. Do you have any questions? <clears throat> questions from the audience questions or comments I would just uh, speak from the economic development standpoint um, this type of grant request has been on various uh, planning documents from the city for almost 20 years uh, to help uh, downtown building owners match some of their funds <clears throat> with federal funds that are going to be spent at some point in time or some place in the state you know, next year regardless. Uh, I think there is uh, what $160,000 of local funds to match $600,000 in federal dollars. So it's pretty good leverage of money. Um, so I'm just speaking in support of it. In support of the city applying as, as the applicant for the grant. I don't have a building in it personally, but a big part of redevelopment and uh, economic development for our city and, and county. <coughs> If anybody has any comments they'd like to do written, I have cards. These would be put into the public comment. If anybody <coughs> interested in a card, pen. What would happen if we didn't get awarded the money? What, your name, please? Andy Shots. What would happen if we didn't get awarded? What would happen to the money in escrow? Would it just go back to the building owners? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just and we apply again. Yep. Hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Just wondering. So, yeah. I, you know, potentially 
six or seven projects we're competing with. Mm -hmm. Everyone got fun too. Sure. It's uh, competitive. It's very competitive. And we're prepared for that. I mean, it's been a lot of work, but I think we've come a long way um, in this eight or nine month process. And just everybody getting an understanding about it, getting all these building owners to kind of get behind it and understand what the process really was, getting the city involved. It's been a lot sure. of um, learning curve. But been I think work. it's been a lot of work. Yeah. And I think as Harry mentioned, uh, part of getting funded <clears> through <throat> this program is being persistent. The demand is greater than the capacity or the amount of funds that they have. So um, <coughs> last round, they said that there was four applications, only one was funded. <coughs> So it's a pretty safe bet three communities are going to come back in for at least a second time. So if we're not funded this round, we can reload in the spring of next year and, and uh, be one of those repeat customers next year. So We also, since the last meeting, have uh, solicited public comment and put a SurveyMonkey uh, online uh, survey out there, distributed that through email and Facebook, and also it was printed in the Sentinel. Um, we had very good response to that. We had uh, about 92 fill out the Survey Monkey and over 20 responses in the Sentinel, including written comments that will be included with the grant application. But the uh, comments were all very favorable. I think about 65% of the people that were surveyed were aware of the project. So that was somewhat encouraging. At least they knew something was going on. And 97%, 96.5 or something, were favorable of using federal dollars for improving the facades. So those are two very significant numbers that came out of that survey. And lots of good comments. Yeah, 79% were likely to visit so we downtown. So signed uh, tonight. Uh, yeah, it's actually uh, down it's a resolution. Yeah, now that will be taken care of tonight for the Friday alternative. But okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Right? Any, any questions? There we go. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. John. All in favor? All right. There was a <coughs> sign in sheet going around. Did everybody have a chance to <coughs> sign in? All right, Casey, we're back to you. Um, I think they've got back plan, there. Can you can you tell me um, is that is that our appointment that's leaving or is it the mayor's? No, they're <coughs> they're actually both yours. Okay. Yeah, because there is a um, not only your council member, um, but also the DZA member. Mm -hmm. um, Bob Candidate, he's been on our board since 2008. Well. I think since 2008, and a fantastic member. His experience and knowledge and his demeanor will be missed. Uh, his intelligence and what he brings to the board, but he is on to bigger and better things and just asks not to be reappointed. So we'll give him a break for a while and maybe we'll come back at it. But, um, so yeah, that is your, it is a four year term and they have to sit on both the BZA and the planning commission. So it's in there somewhere. I can't remember what's your deadline. They well, his term is up. His last meeting is December. Okay. So until you appoint in January, they'll be you'll be down a member. So as long as we can appoint someone in December. Yeah. January. Yeah, that'd be January. great. Yeah. You guys do a, a meeting early in January or December eighteenth. That's further on my list. <laughs> not early. Well, not not early 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 in your January. List. I didn't know if you did one the first well, week of January or you just had your regular meeting. <coughs> no, it's no, a week it's early. It's a week early in January too. Just for the shoot. Yeah, if you can find somebody great in December, that'd be awesome because then they could be at the January meeting. So you need that back on the agenda for December? Yes, please. And they can't be elected or appointed to any board. 
the DZA by state law, they can they have to be citizen Joe, and they have to live inside the city limits. So, a couple criteria. Okay. Any questions? Did you have Did you have anyone that you wanted us to consider? We're on our own. Well, I know there were some names thrown out before. Okay. Um, I don't. Sit down and think about it. But when Teresa was was um, appointed, I know there was four or five names in the list. Okay. If anybody comes in and asks, I'll let you know. All right. Okay. Thank you. So before we go any further, Stephen Rice. Seems a little late in the meeting here, but I want to welcome Gary um, to the council. He's taking Karen Miller's seat. Um, we have discussed <coughs> he, Casey, did she leave? Right there. <laughs> you changed seats on me. What, what's that about? Um, Gary's agreed to fill in for Karen on the area planning. Great. So, um, welcome. Thank you. Okay. Next, um, just a reminder, our December council meeting will be on the 18th, because of the holiday. Um, moving on to new business. Everyone get a chance to take a look at the commissioner's request, for the memorandum, memorandum of understanding for the area plan office. Okay, let's start the fun. Just say it. I'm sure she'll edit it for the paper. <laughs> now this is this is all comes from um, when we we decided to take back our seated funds. Um, it left some of the interlocal stuff that we were sharing the cost for, kind of. hanging there and so this is an attempt to rewrite it so we've been served the notice that they they wish to dissolve the current um, by the first of the year so they would like an answer from us before their next meeting which is sorry which is it's in here somewhere John December 3rd I Pardon? think first Monday December 3rd? December 3rd. I thought they wanted it by November 30th. Yeah, please uh, provide a response by November 30th. Thank you. So we can address it in December 3rd. something that we're willing to entertain or we want we want to amend it and continue negotiating I apologize Brian did uh, call me yesterday but I never I never managed to get him called back I wanted to talk about this a little bit talk to what so really everything's gonna be more or less the same we just pay uh, yeah. Percentage, but then we can kick back off off the RVs that are paying the city. from the city. Yeah, I guess the one thing you look at um, the amount they're wanting. Yeah, could we could we fund a department for for 
or less than that. I don't, I don't know that we could. And one thing to keep in mind is that percentage every year, um, the way that this agreement was structured is that it can change with your economy. And you know, that was important for me when I looked through these and gave my feedback to the commissioners on what this was, is that it was fair. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure it was fair for both parties. <clears throat> so if there's an increase in the economy and 80% of the permits we issue are here, then that would be the percentage. But if there's a depression, it goes down to 30%, then that's the percentage. It's not as if there's an average over five years where you have, you're dealing with an average, you're not dealing with actual percentages. I just thought that would be the fairest uh, for everybody. So, so the 50% and the 61%, where did those come from? I mean, those are? Those are, those are actual numbers. So the, I mean, that's what it is. Well, that was right. what it was last year. Okay. Yeah, and, and that was the only way, I knew how to describe it because obviously it's a little complicated. But um, if I took the January through December and I took the numbers of the building permits, this isn't zoning, the zoning is totally different. And this is running on the assumption that half of our time is dealt with zoning and half of it is dealt with building. Now some years, am I dealing with building a lot more than that? Sure. Some years am I dealing with zoning more than that? Sure. The easiest assumption was half and half. So, um, so if you took that, there's a line item in my budget that's $30,000 that only goes to demos in the county. So that $30,000 was completely taken out of what my total budget was on this estimate. So that wasn't on there. Um, but if you take the example of, um, what was it, 58% or something? 61% of the total 2017 building permits were issued in the city of Rochester. Then it would be 61% of that half, you know, of half of the budget minus that $30,000. Now next year, that number might be 52. So then it would be 52%. Um, and since we're talking about that, the sidewalks are different. The sidewalks would be impossible for me to say it's X percent. And the reason why is because if you build a house, uh, the city code requires you to put a sidewalk in. We don't charge for two permits. You come in and you get a permit for the house, it includes the sidewalk. We do the inspections for the sidewalk and the house and everything that goes in with that. Um, so I don't have a permit to look to, to say we charge X amount for a sidewalk permit on those types of projects. Um, the work orders for the city. Lately, the majority of the sidewalks we've been doing are for the city. Those are work orders. You know, our inspectors may be on site 20 times there's no fee, there's no charge on that. So when I was asked, 2% seemed like a fair number. Some years, it may be this year, it would be more. I spent a lot of time on sidewalks this year. I was just out on one today. I mean, we it's just been a busy year for sidewalks. Now last year, 2% probably would have been about right. So that number wouldn't change unless the council asked for it to be changed or Commissioners did, and then you guys would come together at the table on that. But because um, you're about to start a 50 50 program, which may ramp that up a bit. Okay. So then, sorry, this box at the bottom of the 12,579 is that <coughs> the Rochester fees that would have been reimbursed in 2017? Correct. So um, really, their total would be 46, roughly 46,000. Correct. And the 61%, I didn't see that in here. Is that is that just going to be a set number, or are we going to look at that? Yeah, what's, the, what's the evaluation period when we, when we adjust that? Yeah, basically... Um, an annual basis. It states that... My pages are... Right above the box, it says this example for 2018 fiscal year and every year following shall be calculated. Did you have any issues with this at all, Andy? No, no, I, I understand where it's coming from. Okay. 
paragraph, paragraph three, for what it's worth, uh, um, when it's talking about cost assessed to Rochester, uh, legal fees associated with any court proceedings to enforce an order. Keep in mind, you already paid that. That's not, that part of it's not cash. I'm not finding in the whole one the amount of time required to terminate the agreement. The old one didn't have a time frame. Okay. But so Which, this one, they, they want a year. Again, we thought. My assumption is because of the way we're doing the fees coming back at the end of the year, you do it in mid stream and kind of difficult for the accounting. As far as the new timeline and the new one, I'm yeah. sorry, my copy went to copy page too. So, but um, that sort of something that, again, I didn't believe was very fair. I mean, if the city elects to opt out of the agreement, you know, or if the commissioners did, I mean, you're going to need time to set up an office. You're going to need time to have personnel hired and trained and paperwork and in your mapping system and and uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. And just saying, oh, we're done. And a week later, being like, hey, find the money in your budget to figure it out. I didn't believe that was fair. Uh, that's not very equitable. So in the new, in this revised agreement, we tried to make it as fair as possible to where you, you know, whether it's, you guys could do your budget cycle accordingly. Now, if you say, hey, we only need six months, then that, you know, that's your agreement. But uh, we really thought that there should be something in there, be a little bit fair. Yeah, I mean, it does also state the time that can be changed. It's agreed upon by both parties. Right. Well, you mentioned earlier that an alternative is setting up our own department. Yeah. Right. I I am really not in favor of trying to do that for a number of reasons, but one of them is right there. Um, Casey does an excellent job, in my opinion, and. I wouldn't want to lose that expertise at all. So I'm more in favor of agreeing to, to the uh, new agreement as opposed to even examining a, a separate department for the city. Just my thought. <coughs> There's a motion, I would have second it. <laughs> well, it's not. I mean, we don't need one there. But, I mean, but just, I just, we're just discussing. I, I'm a, discussing. I'm we, need, we need to reach out and then we'll make it official the next meeting. Okay. Well, we need to. Don't we? Need what do you need done here? Three days. They wanted. They wanted three days. Um. I just. I think they just want to know our, our what our intentions yes. are. Exactly. So okay. if we just tell them yes, we're we're agreeable to this. Um, I think that'll suffice until our next meeting to make it official. So. That, that's up to you. I mean, you can, I, I, nothing, nothing prohibits you legally from uh, uh, approving it now and being the first party to, to sign a bilateral agreement. I don't think there's anything that requires. Okay. <coughs> so do, you, do you have a sense for that? Do you, do you think they just need kind of a, an idea that that's you're in agreement or well they already signed it okay. uh, so they've already signed I'm not sure what copy you received but they've already signed it so unless you have changes or questions or you want additional <coughs> information from me on how the office works I mean I think pretty good relationship with a lot of you except poor Gary <laughs> he's kind of new on this but um, any questions I mean but yeah they've already signed it so whenever you're ready I don't see a signature sheet for you guys, though. So. It's uh, right at the end of page 86 of the packet. If that helps you at all. No, that's not signed.
should say like a building in unsafe building in a local at the bottom. We're good to do this with this is the mayor's signature and the clerk treasurer's yep. signature. Thank you. Uh, Terry brought up a good point that you'd, you'd like to bring up this. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say if if our arm's not twisted right at the moment, uh, um, doesn't have to. The decision doesn't have to be made. I wouldn't mind um, kind of where we were headed the first time, was just to give them the response that we are um, favorable towards it. But to make that decision on the next meeting, so that I think we'd have a little more time to come through this. Cause I'd like to have them help. Yeah. If that's acceptable. No, I agree. As long as they don't need it by, I mean. If they need it signed by the 30th, we have to have a special well, session. The verbiage does say response by yeah. the 30th. So, yeah. response Please provide a response by November 30th yeah. so that we may address this at the December 3rd meeting. I think the biggest thing is if you have major issues with the language, yeah. they wanted to be able, you know, if you wanted to negotiate the language or, you know, how it's structured, you know, they wanted to have time for both parties, you know, both bodies to be able to do that. <clears throat> I think telling them your intention would be fine. Yep. It's under screen. I will, I'll reach out to Brian and let him know. So do you need to make the motion to table it to the next meeting? Shouldn't I think it would be a good idea so it's in, in the record that way. Okay. 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 A motion to table it till next meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? All right. Okay, moving, moving on to the Drainage Board Assessment Maintenance Fees. Actually, it was a separate attachment in our packet because okay. it was a, probably another 60 or 70 pages or something like that. When you see the number 37,000, yeah. okay. that, that's what it is. Okay. to uh, have Shada look that up or Carolyn look that up at some yeah. point and we may need a, a special meeting if we yeah, need to. I uh, agree. A few it's days of December. But it says the public hearing December 10th. Mm -hmm. So we need to. We, we want to have prepared before then. Mm -hmm. Maybe just the, the amount that was paid last year. We can see the assessment from last year. Okay. So, you, do you want to try to uh, just set a meeting now, or uh, would we want to get that number to us? Maybe we could get that number to us tomorrow, and then we would. Yeah, um, I have shot and give you some dates for this week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that work? That's fine. Yeah. Yep. Let's do that. Hopefully so, she'll be back tomorrow. She's out with the club, so. Yes. As soon as possible. Okay. So moving on. Resolutions. 
Resolution 7 2018, additional appropriation of low public safety SRTS grant. I entertain a motion for the reading of Resolution 7 2018. So moved. Was that talk by title only? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Second. Well, second. All right, so we move in second for the first reading. Resolution 2018, all those in favor? All right, resolution 7 2018, additional appropriation. I might note that the 400,000 that Tom talked about is what's basically mm -hmm. being moved yeah. to cover the down payment on the truck. <clears throat> All right, um, this is a resolution. We can go ahead and we only need one reading. So I'll entertain a motion to adopt resolution 7 2018. Do you have a copy of that? I don't see a copy in your file. Uh, I have a copy of that. I do. I printed it off. Yeah, I put one. I'll make the motion to approve. Uh, actually, we have one right here. So you can use that to for your signature? Yep. So moving second. All those in favor? Those are second. Yeah, I can make the motion. Laura, I second. Okay, thank you. All right. Entertain a motion for the first for the reading of resolution 08-2018, the resolution authorizing local match for MSRP. <coughs> I, I would uh, move that you uh, read this uh, in its entirety. in its entirety. All those in favor? All right. <clears throat> resolution authorizing local match commitment. <coughs> resolution 08-2018. Whereas the City of Rochester is applying for a community development block grant, Main Street Revitalization Program grant from the Indian Office of Community and Rural Affairs, and whereas the City will provide all required local matching funds, be it resolved by the City of Rochester that Upon the MSRP grant award, the city shall provide matching funds in the amount of $161,720. These funds shall be derived from the following City of Rochester Economic Development Funds, $20,000, and the Fulton County Community Foundation Funds, $25,000, Rochester Redevelopment Commission, TIF, $15,000, Rochester Downtown Partnership, $5,000, and private investment of $96,720. All funds are available and committed as local match for the MSRP project. All right, I'll entertain a motion for the adoption of resolution 08-2018. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. All those in favor? All right. I'll entertain a motion for the reading of resolution 09 2018. So moved. Second. Is that the entirety? We can take all those in favor. <coughs> resolution number 9 2018, Slum and Blight Area Declaratory Resolution, City of Rochester. All right. Um, Entertain a motion for the adoption of resolution 9 2018. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. All those in favor? All right. Entertain a motion for the reading of resolution 10 2018, zoning amendments. Resolution 10-2018 by title only. Mm -hmm. All right, did I get a second on that? I did not hear one. 
I'll second that. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of reading resolution 10-2018 by title only. <coughs> <coughs> Resolution of the City of Rochester to adopt amendments to the Fulton County Zone Ordinance. All right, I'll entertain a motion for the adoption of Resolution 10-2018. So moved. Second. 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 Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Passed. Right. Now, Entertain a motion for the first reading of ordinance number 11 2018. I, I would uh, move that we read this in its entirety. I'll second. So moved and seconded. All those in favor? All right, first reading. Ordinance number 11 2018, an ordinance limiting commercial use of municipal property. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that the use of city-owned properties for commercial activity should be limited. Now therefore be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Rochester that Chapter 119 be added to the Rochester City Code titled Commercial Use of Municipal Property and stating as follows. Commercial defined. For purposes of this chapter, the term commercial activity is activity that is concerned with or engaged in commerce and is not restricted to activities designed to produce a financial profit. Chapter 118.2, activity prohibited. A, except as described in paragraph B, no person shall use any real property or improvements owned by the city of Rochester or any of its subsidiaries for the purpose of commercial activity or selling or offering for sale goods or services to the general public. B, any person seeking to engage in the activity described in paragraph A may obtain the permission of the Board of Public Works in advance. C, it shall not be considered a violation of this chapter for a person to post written notices, advertisements, or offers for commercial activity at a location intended for dissemination of such information. Chapter 118.3, penalty. Any person who violates this chapter shall be subject to a penalty fine not to exceed $100. Nothing in this ordinance supersedes a person's obligation to comply with any applicable responsibilities under Title 11 of the Rochester City Code. Right, entertain a motion for the second reading of ordinance number 11 2018. Title only, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? <clears throat> ordinance number 11 2018, an ordinance limiting commercial use of municipal property. Mr. Hidden, I do have one observation. Uh, yes. The uh, uh, subchapter numbers over to the left should be 119 1 2 3. It's, it's correct in the paragraph, it's wrong in the, the, the side of Or when you have a 118, this should be 119. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to obtain a motion for the third and final reading of ordinance number 11 2018. So moved by title only. Second. Second. All those in favor? Ordinance number 11 2018, an ordinance limiting commercial use of municipal property. Okay. I'll entertain a motion for the adoption of ordinance number 11 2018 as amended to reflect the proper chapter number. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. All those in favor? <clears throat> Chief Butler? One in the city, two in Rochester Township. Combine fire, one in Rochester Township. Call for smoke, one in Rochester Township. Auto fire alarms, five in the city, one in Rochester Township. Electrical problems, one in Rochester Township. Gas leaks, two in the city. Accidents, two in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle Township. 
Medical assist, nine in the city, three in Rochester Township, two in New Newcastle Township, drove the ambulance once. Service calls once to Newcastle Township, cancel calls one to Rochester Township. Uh, totaling 36 calls and one drill. Um, thank you for your support in the, the movement for the truck. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. I know I asked this last time, but would you remind me when will the new truck be in service? It's, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a year out. I mean, the frame rails aren't even put side by side yet, so I'm going to go up Thursday to South Haven to Spencer's plant and actually do the pre-con. We'll go through the spec list one more time, make sure all the widgets and gadgets and switches are exactly where we want them. It's going to marry the other two. The cabin chassis basically would be like our, our engine one and our rescue three. So we're, we're kind of building a fleet concept. It's been a good, um, dependable cab. Brian, you've got the other quotes from the other department. I mean, we, we didn't go, I mean, you went from uh, 501 to 631,000 where the specs or the prices came in for these bids. Um, so, I mean, we're right there. And then I said the city had the funds available. So paying for it, it went from the 501 to 497. So. <laughs> I, had, I brought that to Shada. We did the math. She's not going to get that much interest. So the city's saving money by, by using the money. So it doesn't do us any good to leave it in the bank. It's a project we've had in, in, in mind. It's a 28-year-old truck we're replacing. So, And, and the hinge uh, latch broke on it this uh, last week. I had to bring up the cranks and get it rewelded. So I mean, it's going to be small things. Like, like I said, it's 28 years old. You can come and look at it and say, oh, it's shiny. It looks good. Why? I can get you on a creep or we can go underneath and we can look at things and show you that it is time. So I appreciate your support, Dad. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Chief Shot. Good evening. In the month of October, there were a total of 18 accidents, all of those were property damage. We issued 55 total warnings, 50 of those were for traffic offenses and 5 were for civil offenses. There were 102 total offenses, 38 being criminal, uh, 38 traffic, 63 criminal, and 1 juvenile. Uh, a total of 57 case reports, 593 calls for service, 45 lockouts, 32 vehicles, and 47 <coughs> vehicles. Now, about those numbers, the number of calls for service are not accurate. Um, because <coughs> on our own system now, we're on Cody by ourselves. We're not connected to the county anymore, and we don't have been at dispatch, so we don't have a dispatcher there entering every incident that our guys go on. Um, we're taking steps to correct that. We are accepting applications to hire uh, midnight dispatch back, um, but right now, for the time being, those numbers aren't going to be absolute accurate. Um, and the, uh, the, uh, it, we're having to change some things that we're doing, uh, figure things out on the fly. We've got a, a new way that we're trying to keep track of uh, the number of people that we lodged. I, I know it seems like um, that's a huge jump from the last couple of months, 34 to 47. Seven of those are for people that have warrants, um, and those numbers weren't, weren't able to be tracked before, so we're, we're now able to track those. Um, and then we have the crimes that those people are lodged for. Uh, Gary, just so you know. Um, it says we arrested 47 people, but these numbers are not going to add up to 47. And if somebody was arrested for <coughs> operating a vehicle while intoxicated and possession of meth, I'm going to write down both of those crimes, even though it was just one arrest. That way, just kind of give you an overview of all the crimes that we're seeing. Thanks. Um, other than that, we've got the uh, Santa Parade uh, this Friday. We're going to be shut down Main Street from 9th to 6th. Tom, you're helping, right? Yes. Thank you. Um, we'll be shutting down Main Street at about 5.45. Uh, it'll be shut down until 8.30. Uh, also the 100 block of East 8th. Um, so we're not we're not moving cars, Brian. Um, if they're there, we're going to leave them there. No one can just come in. We're just going to kind of seal it off. We'll have the horse and carriage going up and down Main Street, so we don't want any traffic coming downtown when that's going on. Other than that, that's about it. Um, Getting ready for snow. Not looking forward to it. Do you guys have any questions? Lockouts were up again. Always steady in it. What was the date? Of the 
Friday. This Friday? Friday. Friday. Yeah. Uh, was that the 30th? 30th. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> Thank you, Chief. Thanks. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Here. Uh, in 4th Street, they're currently working between Clayton and Lucas. Tomorrow, they're going to shut down part of 4th. We'll still lay the address for the trailer park. But they'll be hydro excavating around the Buckeye Pipeline. There's two of them. One's abandoned, one's still alive. So that's the, what's going on tomorrow. They're going to expose them so they can put in the storm sewer. <laughs> Thursday, there'll be a hard closure between Blackener and Lucas. Um, so trucks won't be allowed to access Lucas Street from State Road 25. But there'll be the detours will be put up. So that should only last, I think, one or two days. Um, and then December 5th, the uh, cottage watchman will start installing the updated security system for the city. Um, I haven't got a date as far as how long it's going to take, but they'll be, that's when they're planning on starting. Then I got an email today. We're working on our compost registration with IDEM. And uh, we got to submit some more additional information to them. So we got contracted with Commonwealth. Brady Dreyer is working on that with us. And that's all I got. Is, is uh, Fourth Street pretty much on schedule, or uh, <laughs> as far as you know, or is it? I know, not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> and do, do we have a, an end in sight? Mm. Providing, well, <laughs> no more surprises on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Anyone have any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. You're up, Derek. Um, the month of October, the water department did the following duties. The red meters did orders, to repair to replace bad meters, locate, back wash the filter beds, did shut offs, swept them off the plant. Uh, we did get to mow. Um, we located and raised the curb box at 2010 Ford's Court so that we could get on it. Did the same thing at 944 Jackson Boulevard. And then uh, shut off valves so that HIS could lower the six inch water main at East 4th Street and Indiana Avenue. And then we also shut off valves so they can lower the 10 inch water main at East, East 4th Street and Indiana Avenue as well. Um, we now have all the sprinkler meters off for the winter. All well houses, water towers, and the garages are ready for the winter. Digs that were performed, we fixed a curb stop at 724 Ray Street uh, that was broken. Dug up and inserted a new 8 inch valve on uh, East 4th Street and Indiana Avenue. Inserted a new 10 inch main valve at East 4th Street and Indiana Avenue. Um, that was all basically due to the 4th Street project. And then call outs, Randy Carr was called out on the 6th at 10 p.m. to 1200 Madison Street for an emergency locate. Uh, Duke Energy was replacing the utility pole. And then Randy Carr was also called out again on the 20th at 2 a.m. to the water plant for a burglar alarm. Everything checked out okay. The police department assisted us. Um, and those issues have been fixed. Could you answer a simple question for a we'll try. guy like me that doesn't know? What sure. does it mean when you raise the curb box so that you could get on it? Well, that basically okay. means that it was buried or somebody paved over it or it was concrete was poured over it. Back then, people never called locates in. Okay. So if somebody brings in a bunch of fill stone driveway, People don't call locates in. We'll just fill the driveway full, and then when they want the water off, we have to find it. Okay. So call your locates in. That's all I got. If you have any questions, you questions. Seen over like my neighbors did. Right. Any questions? <laughs> and then when they have the leak and they're wanting the water off, they got to wait for us. Yeah. Well, first they got to cut the cement. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> On the report to committees, Barry, do you have anything? Or just downtown. 
just the holiday stroll, brief update on that. There's a lot going on. Um, we're going to have uh, Tina's worked really hard on that. She's got a lot of sponsors. <coughs> this is a major event for downtown. It's just a short period of time, but uh, there's going to be reindeer downtown. There'll be ice carving. There'll be several different people singing choir chorals. There's going to be hot chocolate. There's going to be a parade. There's going to be Santa. There's going to be carriage rides. So come downtown Friday evening, and it'll be a fun night. I might hopefully if the weather cooperates like last year will be really nice. Mm -hmm. Can you make snowflakes if you want to talk? How about snow cones? Oh, mm -hmm. we'll snow. Yeah, we'll shaved ice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, All right, uh, area plan. Um uh, so you have a report. I'll get it for you this time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Didn't need. <laughs> <All right. laughs> All right, Fedco. Fedco met November 1st, man, it seems like a long time ago. So I still had a call by when we met. So the Fedco pitch was October 18th. Uh, it was a nice event held at the Owington Room at Jarity's. Uh, we had a wrap up meeting and have some things uh, we'd like to change. We'd like to have the event again next year. Uncorked and Broach Boutique were both awarded $4,000 and Crossroads Peppers was awarded $2,000. Um, Mr. Boley's still floating out there. He's, he's a property owner, so he's paying taxes on his ground. Um, site request. The partnership for the brewery that was going in down here in the old Baylor building is no more. Um, so they're looking for someone to take over the project. Wings, etc. had their hearing in front of the local alcohol board last week. Um, keep in mind this was the week before November 1st. They received their two-way license and they have one state license left to obtain. Uh, they also asked for a property tax abatement from the city, but they are not eligible for that. Uh, down to Ivy Tech. Uh, community outreach project is going into the second meeting on November 14th. This is the meeting that they have expanded the group for. <clears throat> the chancellor's communicated that there is no change in the budget for Fulton County, but what they offer may change after after this process. Um, you know, it's really the the news from the local businesses is pretty much the same. Everyone's still um, doing pretty well. Uh, the economy's still moving pretty well. So that's all I have. Any pending your questions is from our report. You had something you want to add, Terry? A um, couple of updates. Um, <clears throat> just on uh, wings, they uh, got their, their last state permit, and I think they're on the redevelopment or the uh, plan commission agenda um, in December on the, the 19th to ask for their uh, split for their plat. Um, they won't be able to get approval from uh, drainage until at least the January meeting if they're ready for that. Their original uh, purchase agreement uh, ran through January 2nd, so I think they'll be they'll be looking for an extension on the original purchase agreement. So that that doesn't affect the deal, I suppose they won't be able to get their drainage approved prior to that. But everything else is looking good on that. Um, Bowley um, is, is looking good for a 19 project. Um, he gave us some information that's confidential, but it looks like he will be moving ahead uh, with the project on that 11 acres in 19. Um, Still meeting with a, a, a local group on a on a youth center uh, project. I think it's this week that we actually go to Wabash to look at a youth center uh, model that we think might fit our community, kind of help uh, with some youth, especially in the after school hours. Um, community readiness initiative, which is kind of a basically a leadership alignment assessment that we're getting some help from Ball State University <coughs> on uh, city. Uh, council, county council, county commissioners, some other county offices, some other city offices and town offices will be getting an email from me probably by the end of next week about um, an upcoming survey um, that we would ask that you all as uh, city or uh, community leaders uh, complete 15 minute survey. The survey will look like it comes from Ball State. It'll be like CRI for Community Readiness Initiative. Um, um, dot BSU at EDU, I believe. So just be on the lookout for my email and then that that, uh, that email from Ball State on the survey. Um, 
Nickel Plate Trail is still working on that, looking, uh, working right now to get some borings for the boardwalks. We've had to move those a little bit further west to get some additional borings for geotech uh, so we can even get a bid uh, to, from the port construction uh, to put the boardwalks in. We need about 800 foot of boardwalks in two sections there. Also talking to the Department of Natural Resources because we're going to need some additional funds. Um, and we think they'll provide those because they see this as a very important project. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and skip ahead to the Redevelopment Commission. We did welcome uh, Phil Bowers to the Redevelopment Commission for the city. Not a lot of activity. Uh, most of the funds we have in TIF got a little bit going to uh, Main Street Revitalization Program grant in 19, but mostly you're marked at least right now for the uh, Nickel Flex Trail project. So uh, not much else going on the Redevelopment Commission. Any questions on anything? I wanted to ask about the, um, you said that, I believe you were briefing for the FITCO that um, someone looking for someone to take over the project. Is that the tip a canoe yes. that building? No. The or the business project. altogether? Uh, yeah, the Van Dynes that own the building. Okay. Um, I mean, they're still in some negotiations with the original partnership on the brewery to see if they can put something together there. Uh, if, if that doesn't work out, then they are looking for and think they may have somebody that would come in and, and operate um, both the brewery and, and a restaurant there. Okay. Um, so they're, they're still working on it. Um, there's, they, they really got off their, their um, sort of their Gantt chart on uh, getting things completed by a certain time um, as they were set up. Um, so that kind of threw things off the skid. Um, a, a little bit, uh, but there's still, I know the Van Dynes and the guys that, that really wasn't a partner in the brewery per se, um, and then the guys that were the partner in the brewery are still trying to work out some issues. Um, if, 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 if it goes forward with the current partnership, then, then Mr. Van Dyne probably wouldn't be involved, but they may actually own the building, so there could be ownership change. There's just a lot of stuff up in the okay. air right now, so um, it, it, the Van Dynes still plan to move the project forward as a brewery, what the final form is going to look like is, is up in the air. Does mm -hmm. that help? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for mm -hmm. Terry? Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Moving on to park board. Mason? I was out of town. <coughs> Pretty neat. Good. All right. Good report. Thanks. Okay. Marty. Council on Aging uh, met yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> not much to report, uh, really, but um, Ted had asked me last meeting how many <coughs> miles they uh, are driving in a year, and they drive approximately a thousand miles a day. <coughs> is is what the uh, that's a pretty close estimate of, of what they do. There was. Uh, no report from RSVP, and uh, we will not be meeting in December. The coat drive that they did was a very successful um, project, and they gave a lot. They actually had somebody that uh, crocheted a whole bunch of hats and mittens as well, so they were able to. Uh, in addition to give out coats, they gave out some hats and uh, mittens. Um, three board members' uh, term is uh, there is going to be up, but uh, all three of those board members have uh, re-upped. So that's uh, Council on Aging. The uh, BZA meets tomorrow night. One thing on the agenda, it's a new sign, a variance for a new sign down at Henry's True Value. So, are any questions? That's my report. Any questions for Marty? Thank you, sir. Chase is not here. Um, Tree Board and EMS, Brian? Tree Board did meet early in the month. I was not able to be there. I've not gotten minutes yet, but I'll report those next meeting. And um, even if board did not meet this month. All right. Thank you. Water board, John? Yes, sir. Have you paid attention, John? Just of how these reports are going? Yeah, uh, water board didn't meet. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, there was a story of why I was not able to attend, but I will not get into that right now. Okay. Uh, was it Notre Dame or Purdue? No, no, no. It had nothing to do like that. No, <laughs> unfortunately. 
No. Uh, but they did meet, and the uh, update was presented to Derek. The board uh, that uh, from the East 14th Street to East 18th Street has been built and repaved. Plan operator, operator updates says the best news, everything's operating as normal. John Julian with Umball Associates gave an update on the water department financial status, and as usual, the water department, where as a city, we are very lucky that the water department is, I hate to say it, but able to keep its head above water very well, and, and I attribute a lot of this, as Derek keeps an eye on things, the spending that we do is not excessive with the water deport, board, uh, with the water department, but yet we get a lot of nice things done, and of course the building looks wonderful. All those uh, updates down there have been done. If you haven't stopped in to take a look at them, you should. Uh, Carolyn Gray requested that they off start uh, advertising for a full-time employee at Pam's last day is November 30th of 2018. Marv made a motion to approve the office to start advertising and then take it higher now or after the first of the year. Second uh, from Carolyn and a note from Keith. All righty. Uh, Derek uh, presented the 2019 budget for review and approval. Marv made a motion to approve the 19 budget. Second Carolyn and a third from Keith. And uh, there was a uh, update was presented to Derek on the uh, board on the employees taking vacation. Randy Carr will be taking a vacation uh, from 11 13 18 will turn on 11 22. Uh, the monthly duties was given to the board and everything was approved. And, and we thank Derek for uh, his hard work and how things were moving along. And that was the end of the meeting. Yeah, it was a good meeting. It was a good meeting. Uh, which they usually are. The water board does a, does a nice job. Panel things pretty up, up and up. And again, the financial part is the one that uh, I know for years and years that uh, that I've known John Julian is coming to the meetings. Uh, he's always said, you know, how fortunate we are that, that we're, we're in good financial financial position. Any questions for John? No, but I have a question for you. The Don't ask me. Local amendments for administration of the building code and the sidewalks. Those need to come back to the next meeting. The council signed them and they want to meet for the council signed them. So you want these brought back to the next meeting? Yes, right. please. Okay. All right. Any 88 concerns? <coughs> do you have anything, Andy? Uh, just, just one thing briefly. Uh, <coughs> Part of what I do for the city are the uh, pursuit of ordinance violations, and they don't very often get disputed, but uh, in the last 30 days we did have one that we had a short bench trial on, and uh, I don't come into contact with the uh, body cameras very much, but was able to use a body camera for an ordinance violation, so it's not just the prosecutor who benefits from that, you, you benefit it as well. So uh, we, uh, that's, a, that's a $50 fine right in your pocket. That's always good news. Anything else? Nice job, Andy. All right, entertain a motion to adjourn. So maybe Gary probably ought to be able to make the motion to adjourn <laughs> this first meeting. He can second. Okay. All right. Second all the